Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking an early look at an upcoming third-party application that is a must-have for your handheld, be it Ryzen-powered or Intel. This is coming to us from the developer who goes by the name Project SBC, and uh, just to throw it out there, he's actually one of my good friends. We've become really good friends in the last year or so, and I wanted to show this off. I've got early access to it, and I'm not just saying it because he is one of my good buddies, but this is one of the best applications that I've seen for these handhelds, and it's definitely going to be a must-have once it's released to the public. I do have early access, and I was told that I can kind of show it off here. It should be released in the next week or two, so definitely keep an eye out. I'll leave a link to the GitHub and his YouTube page. Page. But right now, I've got this running on the Ioneo 2, and my stock TDP was set at 15 watts. We've got Spider-Man Remastered. From handheld control panel, I've just taken it up to 28 watts, and that's all I've changed so far. But from handheld control panel, we can adjust the GPU clocks, our static clock there. We can adjust the CPU clocks. Fan Curve, it's got its own built-in game launcher with customizable performance profiles, and uh, I've actually been testing this on new Ryzen 7000, the 7940HS and the 7840U. It does work with both of those new APUs. So I'm going to take the GPU clock here, the iGPU clock, up to 1900 megahertz, which really does help out with these Spider-Man games, be it Miles Morales or just Spider-Man Remastered. And now we're at a static clock of 1900 megahertz. He's also been working on an auto TDP feature and there are plans to implement it. What's on the market right now does work, but you know, if you've ever tried it out, it can be a bit hit or miss. So uh, he does have a different way of working with auto TDP. Hopefully we do see that soon because it's turning out to be really awesome. In this video, I want to kind of go over the features and I will swap over to my game capture in just a second. But uh, with this Ioneo 2, I did want to show you that we can totally adjust that fan curve. We've got kind of a static setting here. And I'm just going to go up to 100%. It's going to blast that fan, and it can get quite loud. But there's also a curve optimizer built in. If we head over to settings, we can set up our own custom fan curve directly from handheld control panel. And uh, this does work with emulation. It'll actually work with any application. But now I want to swap over to my game capture so you can get a closer look at how this all works. Okay, so I've just moved over to my game capture so we could get a better look at everything. And to bring this up at any time, obviously you'll need to launch it once or you can set it up with auto start. Default button combination from your controller would be right on your D-pad, LB and RB at the same time. As you can see, brought it right up. Now I've got a bunch of sections to mess around with, but I wanted to show you some of the more important things, like our home section here. Obviously, we've got controller for our Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, volume, we can mute, brightness, resolution, refresh rate. We can also change the screen scaling from here. FPS limit, TDP, which is going to be very important for these APUs. I'm going to go to 15 watts. EPP, personally, I like around 35%. If you want the CPU to kind of have max performance at any given time, go down to zero, but 35 is kind of a sweet spot for gaming. Active CPU cores. If you don't need all eight CPU cores for a lighter indie game, you can disable them directly from here. Max CPU clock, max GPU clock. Now this is great for just overall controlling everything, you know, right off the bat, but we've got some more sections here that come in really handy. We've got our profile section. I've just got this set up with a default profile, but uh, we can always create a new one if we want to. New profile, we can rename it. You can set it up as your default profile if you want to. And uh, keep in mind, this is on charger from here. So our resolution, let's say 1080, we're going to go to 60 hertz. On charger, we can set our TDP, boost TDP, FPS limit, EPP, and so on and so on. We can also do it on battery. So it will detect if you're on battery or on a charger. Actions, toggle quick access menu. Now this can be edited if you want to. Personally, I like the way it's set up. LB, RB, right on the D-pad. That's going to shut it down or bring it back up. I've already got Steam running, and this was set up right out of the box. LB, RB, up. Brings me right into big picture mode with Steam, so I can get right into playing my favorite games from here very quickly. Toggle mouse mode, and we've got kind of a quick TDP setting, so we can go up by two or down by two with a hotkey. Start, D-pad up, start, D-pad down. This comes in really handy if you just need a little extra in a game. All you need to do is use those hotkeys to bring it up or down. I'm not going to go into mouse mode right now because we are using a controller here. But our app launcher is something that is really awesome. Right now, I've got Game Pass, Epic Games, and Steam installed on this PC. 
and handheld control panel will actually scan through our default directories and find all of our games, but we kind of need to enable this. So we're going to go over to settings, and from here, we're going to scroll down, sync games. So I'm just going to press A. Like I mentioned, it's going to scan those default directories. And now when I move back over, you can see it's got all of the games that I have installed on this PC right here ready to go. So for instance, Cyberpunk 2077, I can launch the game right now from here if I want to, but I want to set up kind of a custom profile specifically for this game. X on my controller, it's going to edit this. Resolution, 1080, let's go to 60 hertz. We can change that TDP, and again, on charger or battery. I'm on charger right now, so I'm only going to be changing this one. 25 watts, and for that boost, let's go to 30. FPS limit, EPP, I'm going to go to 35 here. Max CPU, max GPU clocks. I'm going to go with all eight cores, and again, battery. So there is something important here with the GPU clocks. I'm going to save this by pressing start. But in order to kind of get the maximum clocks out of your iGPU, we do need to head back to settings. And you can see that my max GPU clock is 2500. It's actually 2800 on this APU. But you can set it right here. That way you don't go over or under. Soon as you install this, I think the maximum is around 15 to keep it kind of safe. Most APUs will go at least up to that but I'm going to take this up to 25 just to be sure. And while I'm in game, I can actually change this, but you could always set it directly from your profile. But yeah, this app launcher is really awesome. Um, I mean, it just scanned all of the games that I have here. And like I mentioned, oh, it looks like it scanned my Blizzard section also. So Blizzard is working because I've got World of Warcraft here. Pretty cool. So Epic, Blizzard, Steam, Game Pass, and possibly more. I'm sure more will be added in the future if that's it, but that's all I've got installed on here and it found all the games that are installed right now. Information, and of course settings, we've taken a look at this, but uh, theme, dark or light, our accent color can be changed. Change that up for me. App location, right or left, depends on how you want this set up. Language, enable notifications. We can have this auto start when Windows starts up if you want to. Auto start auto check for updates, auto smart fan control. Now with the system I'm on right now, I can't get fan control going, but on the Aya Neo 2 that you saw at the beginning of the video, we've got full fan control with handheld control panel. Moving down, we can set our minimum TDP of this APU and maximum, sync the TDP values. But overall, this has turned out to be really awesome and I can't wait for more people to get their hands on it. Let's move into Cyberpunk 2077. We can launch it from here. I've scanned my directories and I've got a profile set up. The TDP is set at 25 watts. We've got a boost up to 30. And with this system here, our boost will stay for a very long time. So we've just hopped right into Cyberpunk 2077 and I've got Afterburner running so we can take a look at everything. CPU package power is going to max out at 30 watts. That's our maximum boost that we have it set at. And I've actually set my iGPU here to 1500 megahertz just to show you that we can change this easily also. I'm going to bring up handheld control panel. And we'll go to 2500. As soon as I exit, you'll see that jump up the 780M iGPU, 2500 megahertz. So this is kind of lock it right there for us. That's our static GPU. And we're only at 30 watts running at 60 FPS. These new RDNA 3 APUs are actually really awesome. But if we want a little more wattage, right in game, let's go up to 41. And now you'll see my CPU package power go on up. So we've got on the fly TDP tweaking, GPU clocks, we can scan for our games here. And this will be available to the public in the next week or so. There are some bugs that the developer needs to kind of work out here. But overall, you know, I've been doing a lot of testing with it and it works out really, really well. So obviously I've been super excited about this and I've actually tested it on the One X Player, the One X Player Mini, the One X Player X, the AOK Zoe. I've tested it on the new 7000 series Ryzen laptop and obviously the Aya Neo 2. It's working on all of those APUs and as soon as this is available to the public, I will post in my community section, but definitely keep an eye on Project SBC's YouTube channel and GitHub. Links for those will be down below. 
And if you've got any questions, let me know in the comments below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.